Welcome back, everybody, to our journey to CCIE starring Ronnie Wong. And in this episode, we're going to build on what we were discussing last time. As you remember last time, Ronnie had, he, he liked my idea of building a study tracker, and he built one of those. In fact, very impressive. Ronnie really flexing his Excel muscle right there. So this awesome tracker, that's wonderful. In this episode, let's go ahead and discuss setting a study schedule. I think it was Tony Robbins who said something along the lines of, if you think about it, it's a dream. If you schedule it, it's reality. And that was a really rough paraphrase. So my apologies <laughs> to the great uh, public speaker, Tony Robbins. But that really did make an impression on me, that thought of, boy, this is probably something I better really hardcore schedule or it's not going to happen. Ronnie and I create episodes of great Cisco training here at IT Pro TV. And the only reason that happens is because there is a schedule. If it was left up to Ronnie and I, we would just hang out and talk entertainment and music trivia, and we'd never get around to recording. So Ronnie, one of the things that I wanted to show you was a bird's eye view of the schedule that I used as I was moving through CCIE. And this was another thing, Ronnie, that I had to get my wife's permission about. My Well, my daughter was too young at the time. She just didn't care at four years of old age about this, other than seeing daddy, that's important. But I really did need to get the buy-in of family, and even a couple of friends. For example, I used to play tennis with a bunch of guys on Saturday, and I had to tell them, no more tennis for me on Saturday. So you will potentially have to get the buy-in of friends and family on this. Now, since we're actually talking about the idea of scheduling here, I've been, of course, uh, on my journey as I've been looking around, trying to find out as much information as I can. I've started seeing where people said, oh, I spent eight hours a day every single day and even 14 or 16 hours on weekends to ensure that I got this done. So Anthony, help me out realistically uh, in terms of your experience and also of course teaching others to actually get this. What was more of a realistic time schedule that we could set if we're already working uh, you know, and also trying to get our CCIE at the same time? Yeah, thanks so much, Ronnie. That's exactly what I wanted to show. Let's bring that up. I just sat down here and made a quick graphic for us of what it looked like for me, Ronnie. And I got to be honest, when I initially started serious prep for the CCIE, I was not doing weekends at all. So I was doing Monday night, you can see the blue there represents CCIE study. So everywhere you see blue, Ronnie, that's IE prep work. So it was Monday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. And after a couple of failed attempts, I realized that one of the things I needed to do was do more of a marathon study session and that became Saturdays. I spoke to my wife, I spoke to my family, I said, look, I need everyone to vacate the premises on Saturdays. And my wife was like, great, I'll just come up with something fun to do, we'll visit, we'll, you know, if, if they were home, they treated it as if, you know, they were in a library, right? As much as possible with a four-year-old, but so, I added, Ronnie, those long, long Saturdays. And in our very next episode of the CCIE journey here, I'm going to talk to everyone about how you can mix it up, how you can make studying as fun as possible. But as I got closer to the lab, those Saturdays, those marathon sessions, I will give this little tip away in this episode. As you might guess, 
those were at the command line. So those long Saturdays were hammering at building full-blown lab topologies to build my speed, to build my stamina for that type of grueling exam that I had coming up. Now, since we already know like the exam itself is overall uh, eight hours, right? With three, three hours being designed, five hours being that lab part, I can see doing something like that out on Saturdays. But let's talk about the rest of the week here just for a brief moment. How much time would actually be talking about here in terms of the day and, and the hours that you're spending uh, on your weekdays? Yeah, that's that's great. So we know Saturday was all darn day. And of course, I would take Saturday night off. But yeah, let's talk about those evenings. I always said that I had to do a minimum of three hours, Ronnie. Okay. And of course, there's going to be exceptions there, right? And of course, there's going to be sessions that run long. But a lot of times with the IE, you can't really say like, okay, I'm going to do an hour because an hour just goes so quickly. Right. Especially, and we'll talk about this in the next episode, Ronnie, especially like you know yourself, right? Like it could take you an hour just to prep your topology and stuff, right? right. That you then want to practice against. So I always tried to give myself that minimum three hour window. And, you know, some nights that felt like a marathon. Uh, as you saw from my schedule, I was working a full-time job. So this was not like something I could just sit and do all day, every day. And Ronnie, I think a lot of times when we see these folks out there studying for CCIE and they say statements like, oh yeah, the only way you can pass is to study 14 hours a day, every day, well, that's probably how they did it, but I'm sure they didn't work, right? So they were not employed at the time and they were studying all day, every day around the clock. But I'm living proof along with plenty of other CCIEs that you can achieve this successfully and without too much pain. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. It was painful, but you can achieve it. You can succeed while working a full-time job. One of my friends in the industry, she just achieved her CCIE and she had a new baby and she's a single mother. So, you know, never say never, never say it's impossible. So I'm glad, Ronnie, that we took a look at this little mock-up, but it's quite accurate as to what I was doing with a study schedule. And by the way, did you notice that I had Wednesday nights off? Mm -hmm. Sure. Did you notice that I didn't do a thing on Sunday for CCIE? Sure. And in fact, I would sometimes ask for exceptions. When you really start getting into it, you'll really start enjoying it more. And I remember more than one Sunday afternoon, I would you know, bring my wife a gift. And then after presenting a gift to her, I would usually say something like, do you mind if I play with multicast for a few hours this afternoon? And she would say, go ahead. But uh, notice that there were definitive slotted times where I wasn't going to think about CCIE. And that is very important, I think, for your sanity and to overall maintain the schedule. Well, Ronnie, I can't wait to see if you find making a schedule useful. I can't wait to see if you do that. And again, you won't offend me if you don't take this advice. And I can't wait to see if you do make one, what yours might look like. In the next episode of Ronnie Wong's Journey to CCIE, we're going to go ahead and discuss what to do to make the most of those study sessions. Students will say to me, Anthony, were you reading all night? Were you watching videos all night? Were you labbing all night? Well, we'll answer that and many other questions in our next episode. Thanks so much for joining us in this episode. My name is Anthony Sequero with IT Pro TV, and I hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any great content like this.